Hello everybody, this is Ren Diggity Dalga coming at you in another Minecraft episode from the Hermitcraft server. We're kicking things off today my friends from the hideous foundations of Scabland Castle where in the previous episode we managed to throw up a bunch of extremely ugly pillars of pure colored eye melting badness and to kick things off today I thought we would start trying to make this castle into more of a castle and less of an eyesore. I mean, let's be fair, it's going to be an eyesore no matter what we do, but at least we could make it a pleasant eyesore is kind of my plan. And I've already started this morning throwing up some of the outer walls of the main castle structure. And even though I would like to try and make some pretty decent progress on this with you guys today, I have a very itchy itch that I need to scratch and that itchy itch is called Blue River Raceways. Oh man, we are getting so very close to opening up Blue River Raceways for the first official Hermitcraft Grand Prix, which is an event I want to talk to a little bit about in this episode a little bit later on. And I think we'll do a little bit of work out here at Scab Castle and very shortly head over to the race course because there is one final project out there that we have sort of left hanging that I would very much like to get working on uh, over the course of the next two days. And that, of course, is the pavilion building. I would like to finish off the interiors of the pavilion so that we can actually start thinking about getting some races going. And to be completely honest with you, I'm a bit tired of seeing the same colors every day that I wake up and log into the server. So it would be nice to head out there uh, to the race course and, I don't know, place a few frozen blocks here and there. So, tell you what, we're not going to mess around today. We're going to get kicked straight into some sort of time-lapse action for this business, get these walls thrown up pronto, quick, fast, and in a hurry, and then we're going to go work on Blue River Raceways, because it, it feels like a Blue River Raceway day. And so, without further ado, it's time-lapse time, baby! Well, the walls of Scabland have gone up. It is looking a little bit better, actually, than it did before. At least it's starting to resemble some sort of castle-like structure. Ooh, just spotted a, a block out of place over there. Hold on, let's go stick the one final block to complete the build. There's another one missing there. Uh, is this a build? It's difficult to actually ascertain whether this is something we would define as a build. It's something. It certainly is something. Uh, what I enjoy most about this is the fact that the entrance to Scab Castle <laughs> is not aligned with the road of Scabland, which is just glorious. Uh, I do enjoy that very much. And on top of that, um, well, the interior is just one massive open space, which is going to, at this rate, spawn quite a lot of mobs, which Interestingly enough, is something we need to ensure is the opposite to a Good Times with Scar build, which is why at the bottom of each turret, there is a layer of diorite slabbage. As we do know, our beautiful fellow Hermit Scar is very good at making massive mob traps. Scarland's going to be the exact opposite. No mobs shall spawneth within Scabland anywhere. <laughs> which I guess is a good thing, uh, I suppose. Yes, um, but yeah, anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the time lapse. For those of you who were wondering about the music, uh, actually one of Scar's time lapse um, super fast forward mode songs played in a very weird way. I think I slowed it down or made it sound really strange. So I thought uh, that was quite a nice idea. In fact, one of you guys had that idea in the comments of the previous video, and it was such a sweet idea that I decided to make uh, Scar's time-lapse music absolutely horrendous and that was the time-lapse music for the walls of Scabland and yeah it, it's been quite a lot of fun this morning and today putting this all together but that's enough I think for this episode from the lands of the scab let us head all the way out 
to Blue River Raceways and do a little bit of work on our boat race out there because I, to be honest, don't want to look at this for one more minute this week. It's um, it's starting to hurt my brain, but we'll see you over at, uh, at the race course. It's the next day in real life, my dearest viewers, and here we are back in the loft at Blue River Raceways. And I tell you something, outside in real life here in England, there is a storm brewing. The wind is blasting, the rain is coming down like nobody's business. And I can't think of anything better to do today than play Minecraft and build the interior, finally, of the loft. This is the pavilion building, as it has come to be known here at Blue River Raceways. And uh, over the course of the last few months, we've been slowly but surely adding things to it. Custom trees and little forests and whatnot. But what has been lacking has been the construction of an interior. And, uh, well, I am very excited because I have a really great design to plug into this thing. A design that was put together with love and happiness by Old Man and Lunar two extremely talented builders in my build team, and uh, I couldn't make it any better. So I'm going to use their design, do a couple of my own tweaks, and slowly but surely, we shall bring this pavilion to life. Once this is done, we will be ready to invite the hermits to come out here for the very first Grand Prix of the Blue River Raceway track, and very, very excited. I also want to spend a bit of time on the track with you guys today because I've been making some adjustments. You might have spotted the sign over here. Of course, over at Etho's side of the race course, he made these really awesome banners that have arrows on them, showing the races where they need to go in case they spin out. And I thought we need the same thing uh, on our side. And so I've been traveling along the track, adding these arrow pointers, allowing our racers to know exactly where to go next. And, uh, well, I tell you what, once we finish some work there on the pavilion, we'll go for a lap around the course together and get a feel for where we are at. Um... Because the place is almost ready to go. The course is almost finished. I cannot believe it. Anyway, dear viewers, that, I believe, is enough waffle for one segment. I'm sure you'll agree. I'm going to take myself back to the pavilion and get down to some proper building this morning. Because, to be quite honest, that's all I really want to do today. Just build stuff. And when I have something really awesome to show you, which will literally just be in a second, because the next segment just will be edited directly onto the end of this segment, uh... I'll bring you back, I guess, in one second. It's another beautiful day out here on the frozen plains of Blue River Raceways. Glorious blue skies with fluffy clouds, a fresh powder of snow on the ground. But my goodness, it is chilly out here. Whew, man, let's get inside and go warm ourselves at the brand new fireplace of the loft. Welcome back, guys. I have been a busy making a thing. And it is a gloriously warm and cozy hearth here at the very back of the loft. I just love it. It is absolutely beautiful. These mud blocks, amazing. I've not managed to use these in a build yet, and I, I just love them. They're so fantastic, and they work so nicely in this build. They, they go really nicely with the deep slate bricks, too. And uh, this is a gloriously massive hearth that I really wanted to have in this loft building. I wanted it to be the primary spot that your eyes see as you walk in. I want you to feel the warmth coming forth from this thing. And uh, for all the racers after a long days training out on the track to come and warm their hands over this here fire and maybe have a couple of marshmallows or something and a hot cup of cocoa uh, while they get ready for another practice lap. Uh, but yeah, looking glorious. I mean, we have so much space just to fill still. And the next thing that I want to kind of work on now is maybe some sort of bar over here, a hot cocoa bar, where racers could come and order their hot beverages, <laughs> which I think would be pretty cool. So I'm thinking like a nice big bar here with maybe some bar stools over here. Uh, we'll try fancy this up a little bit, of course, but this might be quite nice, right? Because from this bar section here, we can actually see over the first main bend we would see racers zooming past as they take their laps. And we can sit in here in the nice warmth of the loft and take it easy. Gem fell from a high place. The server currently playing decked out. And here we are on the grind. Uh, you love to see it, man. Server nice and full of hermits. Everybody doing their thing. And we've still got a ton of stuff to do here. But 
before we do that, guys, I do want to take you out to the race course because there is a section of race course that I've been working quite hard on over the last couple of days. I haven't put any of it on camera and I wanted to bring you guys up to speed uh, with where we are on the Polar Bear Express. That was the last section of track that we worked on together the last time we worked on this project on YouTube. And uh, over the course of the last few weeks, I've been working very hard, not only putting in these arrows to help the racers uh, track their, their way down the course, but I've also been adding a bunch of polar bears to the Polar Bear Express. I mean, what is the point of having it called the Polar Bear Express if there are no polar bears that you can bash into as you race? And so I have added probably 50 polar bears all the way along uh, the very length of the Polar Bear Express. And on top of that... I have been working very hard on adding blue ice booster uh, strips to all of the diagonals. And I think I have three or four more, four more diagonals left to do at the very end. But as you guys can see, it is looking super cool. Look how cool the sign looks uh, with the, the frozen mountains as a backdrop. And yeah, you're going to have to dodge and weave your way past these polar bears, trying to keep yourself on the blue ice, because this is where you're going to get a speed boost down these very long straights. But yes, as you can see, lots and lots of booster strips have been added. Still a bit more to do, um, but we shall see how far we can get in this episode. We'll do a lap in a few minutes' time and uh, see what time we can kind of get. I think the fastest time we've managed to get so far on the track uh, is about 3 minutes and 56 or something like that. And I really want to see if I can get a faster time like that now that I've added these booster strips. Uh, but yes, anyway, I'm back to the pavilion, guys. Going to go carry on working on the interior there. And uh, we'll make some decent progress tonight and see where we are in the morning. My goodness, after all of these months of hard work out here on Blue River Raceways, what an incredible sight this is to behold. Everything coming together as the moon rises behind False Symmetry's audience stand at the finish line of the race. And I've been very hard at work today, making things and stuff, and trying to finish this build, or at least get the interior of the pavilion to a point where we can get it done by the next episode. Wow, look at this. It is just, it is glorious at night. Look at this. Oh, absolutely amazing. Uh, a new addition to the building, a chimney with smoke bellowing from it, coming from the giant hearth within. I wanted this loft building to feel like an inviting place to come after a long, hard day on the track. A place to come and warm your hands, to take the freeze out of your cheeks, to have a hot cup of cocoa, and to talk about the laps that you did, and all the times you got stuck in Ethos section of the racetrack. And uh, I am very excited to take you guys inside to show you how far we've come. Not managed to finish it yet. I think we will finish it in the next episode. That's quite a lot of mobs out here. Let's uh, scoot in, close the door, and hope none of those foolios try to come in here. Um, but here we go, guys. Lo and behold, the chess monster that I have been using to build the interior of the pavilion. Yes, I've tried to make it as neat as possible to make it as unchess monstery as possible, and that's because I don't want it to defile the beauty that is within. Uh, hello there, Mr. Skeleton. No, you, you don't get to come in. You, you are not a member of this clubhouse. Please leave. Um, but anyway, here we go, guys. Take a look at this. The BBR pavilion coming together a treat. I'm going to take you guys on a full immersion tour. Let's go through all the various things that have been added. Firstly, a beautiful aquarium for this little axolotl. Chilling in there, happy in the warm glow of the massive hearth at the back of the room. 
This hearth is supposed to heat up this entire building, of course, so we needed to make the fire large and in charge. And that is exactly what it is. And after we come here and warm our hands, perhaps we would like to get some cocoa, and to the bar we go. We would come and sit and order a delicious hot beverage, perhaps some mulled wine for the adults out there, some hot chocolate for the kiddos, and uh, I don't know, maybe even a magazine to read while we ponder over the times that we managed to get on the racetrack throughout the frosty day that has just passed. Upstairs, we've got some stairs taking us all the way to the upstairs. That was a ridiculous sentence, but here we are. And uh, up here, we're gonna be building some rooms that racers can come in, that sleep in and chill in. Uh, for those who wanna come out here and practice for many, many hours, they can come and set their spawn here. And uh, we'll have some lovely cozy rooms here in the pavilion. And uh, looking down upon uh, the clubhouse below from up here is quite sweet. And, well, the last things that I'd like to add to the pavilion is somewhere to get boats. I think it's going to be over here. In the original design, we can come and order boats from this area here. But I think I might just make the boats free and set up some sort of a cool place where you can pick your boats. Um, and in this part of the room, on these two sides, I'd like to have scoreboards for each of the hermits. So each of the hermits will have their own a uh, private scoreboard that they can start recording their uh, their racetrack times on. And perhaps we'll have an overall scoreboard over here for the hermit that is doing the best, something like that. So still a little bit to add in here, but of course we've got a lovely little chilling area uh, over here where if the fire is a bit too hot, we can come and relax on these comfy couches. And for those who maybe want to get stuck into a nice dusty book out here in the frozen tundra, well, there's a lovely library over here to come and chill. Uh, with beautiful views out across the land and a lovely place to come and read your favorite book. Maybe Lord of the Rings for the eighth time. Uh, you might want to come out here and, and uh, get some reading done. There's a, a lot of anger outside, isn't there? Which is, isn't great, but it's fine. We're snug and cozy in the pavilion. Nothing can go wrong. And um, very, very happy with how it's all turning out. Beautiful light fixtures hanging from the ceilings and uh, especially like these these kind of things. They feel very old-fashioned to me, you know, like something from the 70s or something that you might find in a ski lodge from 1972. And uh, absolutely beautiful. I love them. And um, yeah, very pleased with how we're coming on here, guys. However, I don't want to work on this anymore. I think next up, I'd like to take us out to the race course itself because last night on live stream, I managed to do some very serious work on... Uh, a section of the track that we've been meaning to finish for the last few months and it's a, a section that is very important because it is the section that connects the Rendog side of the track to the Etho side of the track and that is of course the tunnel that we dug out known as Blue Rock Tunnel and we did a bunch of work on it last night took us about three or four hours and we managed to bash out something quite spectacular so let's head over there and we'll have a quick look and then well, you know what time it is. It's it's time to do a lap of this bad boy. See if we can get a really good time going. Last night, we managed to clock in on a 4 minute 36. And in this episode, I'd like to see if we can do better than that. But uh, yeah, to Blue Rock Tunnel we go. Many a llama and trader were unfortunately harmed in the construction of Blue Rock Tunnel. Don't ask too many questions. They got in the way of progress. Okay? And they were literally in the way, so they were dispatched. Also needed their leads to yoink the polar bears into the Polar Bear Express. So thank you for your sacrifices, and their heads now are perched up here at the entrance of Blue Rock Tunnel uh, for the rest of time. So good job, uh, you fine llama and trader peoples and sheeples and llama peoples. But guys, here we are in Blue Rock Tunnel. It is completed, and it is... Looking absolutely spectacular. I've managed to somehow create an optical illusion with this build uh, while we fly at hyperspeed through the tunnel. You might notice that the tunnel is kind of warping, right? Do you see that? It's almost as if the top of the tunnel is bending upward. Uh, almost as if we are going into hyperspace, you know, in like uh, sci-fi films when, I don't know, the Millennium Falcon or something jumps into hyperspace. The, the camera kind of fisheye warps. You know, and that's kind of what I, uh, the sort of feeling I get as we go really fast through this tunnel. I think it's such a cool effect. And I think that the reason that it's doing this is because we went with a very low key design for the light fixtures at the top of each of these segments. 
And because it's just a one block light uh, feature that's cutting through the red overhangs of the tunnel, I think you get that warping effect as you go really fast through this. And I think that's super cool. It's adding to that feeling of speed. You might also notice these shadow lines, right, that are generated by the lighting in the tunnel. And I think those horizontal lines are also adding to the speed feeling through this thing. You know, we've got multiple things flying past your peripheral as we fly through this tunnel. You've got the, uh, the struts of the support beams. You've got the top layers of the support beams, the lights. Uh, you've got the blue eye strips, and of course you have the shadow lines, and I think all of that helps with the illusion of speed in this thing. GG Jim, getting through the dungeon in one piece, you'll love to see it. Um, but yes, absolutely fantastic. I love the way that this looks, and when we race through it uh, in our lap today, you'll see how cool it has actually turned out. We also installed this really sweet feature, fe feature which was um, a design that was suggested by somebody on stream, and it turned out really, really nice. Sea lanterns behind white light, and that's the arrow indicating go that way. And uh, yeah, we do a lot of this sort of thing on live stream. And if you've been missing out on, li on our live streams, guys, come and join us on twitch.tv forward slash Rendog TV. We do all this kind of cool stuff together. And it's, uh, it's a super fun time. And we end up doing a bunch of amazing progress, like us so. Uh, but yes, that is what I wanted to show you out here, guys. Very pleased with Blue Rock Tunnel. It is now completed. Rendog's side of the course is now officially connected to Ethos. And there's only one thing left to do for today's episode, which is to do a proper race around the track and try and beat our current fastest time of 4 minutes and 36. So yeah, back to the start line, and let's get ready to race our butts around the spectacle that is Blue River Raceway. Ladies and gentlemen from all over the world, welcome to Blue River Raceway, where today we shall be attempting to break the world record lap time of 4 minutes and 36. We're going to be using the Reed Boat for maximum speedage. We have done some tests and we do believe that because the air can pass through the bamboo things of the boat, this is, by science, the fastest boat in the game. And, uh, well, I guess we shall very shortly see if that is indeed the case. We are going to be starting the lap from a uh, static position. And if we can hit the arrow, start the music and get ready to race. Everybody strap yourselves in, get the engines started, and into Blue River Raceway we go. Although the sun is going down, probably should not have done this when it's night time. But here we go, we're off. And uh, I'm going to walk you guys through all the sections of the track and let's see what we can do. Coming up first is Pavilion Bend, taking us around a massive corner into Shortcut Chicane. And the plan here is to take the shortcut nice and cleanly. We bounce into the little thing and lose a little bit of speed there, but we are still okay. Bumping our way through Shortcut Chicane, losing about half a second there. Let's see if we can make it up here in the Impulse SV filter section. We're going to take the left fork. That's going to take us onto a really great line for Pink Petal Pass. For Pink, Pe Pink Petal Pass, we want to go around the outskirts of this particular section of track. This gives us a very clean line into the Polar Bear Express. And speaking of the Polar Bear Express, we are holding thumbs for a clean section. Polar Bears out of the way and we want to try spend as much time on the blue eye speed boosts as possible. He says that and goes right off them right away. Let's try straighten out as we zoom into the Polar Bear Express and dodge and weave the animals that have scattered themselves across this very fast and treacherous section of Blue River Raceway. Into the clean straights we go as the sun sets to the right. This is bringing some fear into our hearts as there will most likely be mob spawns uh, toward the second half of the track, but nothing we can do about it now other than persevere and try and make sure we don't hit any polar bears. Uh, we lose a lot of time by hitting polar bears. You will dead stop if you hit a polar bear. So even if you lose a bit of time slowing down to dodge them, it is worth it, I would say. Into the very frozen sections and slowly but surely making our way toward Blue Rock Tunnel. We're going to try bounce around the edge of those stacks of polar bears. And these ones are all over the place, but unfortunately, straight into a polar bear. Not too bad, though. We got a pretty decent bounce. However, I feel because of that, we might have to take the villager shortcut in Ethos section of the track. One of the most difficult and treacherous shortcuts in the entire race. And I don't think that we will get a decent time if we don't take the shortcut. 
We got mobs spawning on the track now and things are getting very treacherous. There are creepers left, right and center. Why are we doing this in the middle of the night? Nobody knows. Let's see if we can get a decent bounce into Blue Rock, Ra Blue Rock Tunnel. And my goodness, that is very, very bad indeed. And uh, yes, this is not going to be a fast lap, I fear. I probably should have slept the night away, but we shall carry on. Maybe we do another lap after this one. This can be the practice lap, I guess. And, uh, well, we will try and take the villager shortcut. Although, now that I'm thinking about it, this might result in some villager deaths. Hopefully, Etho lit up the village. But we will only be able to tell once we take the shortcut. So, we're going to slow down here so that we hit the... Uh, the pressure plates correctly it is quite difficult to do this properly but we are in to the villager shortcut and this is going to hopefully gain us a bit more time if we can get past all the things including iron golems that are currently in the way oh my goodness what a tricky shortcut but it looks like we got through in one piece very nice next up into the snowman uh section which is also a very very difficult section to navigate especially when there are spiders on the track we're going to go around the back and then straight through the middle here, there's a nice clean line if you can do it. But if you hit a snowman, it is no good. Now, into Minecart Alley we come. And this is where we can also lose a bunch of time. We have to try and set a nice straight line here. But hit by the Minecart and we got through that one somehow. Who knows how that happened. But around the bend we go and into Ethos Chicanes. And this is one of the most difficult parts of the entire track. The only reason I'm doing it so smoothly is that I have practiced it a lot. But if this is your first time around the track, I guarantee you, you will get caught out in these very tight, squiggly bends with spiky bits all over the place that you will fly into in the barriers. It is guaranteed. But we got through that section in one piece. Into the final section of the track we go through the frozen mountain straight which is one of my favorite parts of the track. So beautiful, so epic. And, um, well, you can't really see much at night, but I guess it's kind of cool at night too. As we see the lights of civilization come into focus, we are heading to the end of the track. And, oh, what a great view. You can see the Blue River Raceway sign from that section of the track. I, you know what? I didn't even, I haven't even noticed that in the past. That is such a nice effect that I've just noticed, but that's great. Into the final stretch we go. And toward the finish line, we race, and there we go. Cross the finish line in one piece, although I don't know what the time is. I'm going to have to um, evaluate the time um, in editing, but I suspect that that was not a very good time indeed. And, uh, well, we're going to take uh, an arrow to the face, and as I remove my jumper, because I am now sweating, we're going to do one more lap for today's episode. <laughs> nice. After spending a bit of time with my engineers in the pit lane, I have come to the conclusion that the bamboo boat is terrible. Though it is lightweight and the wind passing through the bamboo gives it some sort of extra boost speed, it is extremely unstable and we need as much stability as possible to be able to dodge the polar bears in the Polar Bear Express. And so we are going to be switching to the pink boat, which has more stability in it. And, uh, I mean, it's exactly the same, but you know, we're just pretending here. Yes, more stability in the pink boat. And uh, the sun has just risen, so we're going to go for one more lap for today, guys. Let's see if we can do a little bit better than we did in the previous lap on the bamboo boat. And we'll start from exactly the same place so that we can keep the timing consistent. And uh, yes, I've warmed up now, and now it's business time. 4.36 is the time we are targeting. And let's see what we can do. Down the beginning straight, we go through the tunnel of BBR into the Pavilion Bend. And of course, Pavilion Bend taking us into Shortcut Chicane. And the perfect line, of course, is hitting the shortcut by bouncing off here and going through the gap, hitting a little bit of slow here so that you can get yourself into this section. And that was a nice, clean take through that shortcut. Now into the Impulse SV section. We're once again gonna go to the left fork and try and go around the nice, safe, backward bend of pink pedal pass there are shorter ways to go but they are more treacherous and require more skill and i am not the greatest boater in the world but we did lose a little bit of time there on the sand trap that is fine we are coming into the polar bear express faster than we did in the previous lap i feel and uh, though the boat it, the boat definitely is not as fast well it is as fast but we're just going to say that it's not as fast because it's a little bit heavier on the track but that gives us a little bit more stability to get past the polar bears which we have managed to do very nice first batch of polar bears dodged 
onto the blue ice we go, try to get maximum speed through Polar Bear Express. And uh, we're holding thumbs that the Polar Bears will move out of the way so that we can keep on the blue ice for as long as possible. So far, we have blue iced quite a large section of the track. And we're going to cut the corner there to dodge the Polar Bears. Very nice. Okay, all the time that we lost at the beginning of Polar Bear Express, I feel we have yoinked back in this section, although that was quite a wide bend there. That is fine. Another corner successfully cut. Another Polar Bear very very closely dodged we shaved the whiskers off for of that one uh, it must be said but here we go into blue rock tunnel section we did not do well in blue rock tunnel section in the last lap we're going to try and do a little bit better this time around there is a very specific spot that you need to bounce we kind of bounced off that polar bear in a very weird way and we lost a little bit of time there but i think that's okay uh you're going to get very lucky to not hit a polar bear down the polar bear express of course to have a perfect lap you'll have to dodge them all but i don't think this will be a perfect lap but still a very good one nonetheless now we want to try and hit this pillar here which we do perfect now let's try stabilize onto the blue ice if we can just try to get that extra boost speed through blue rock tunnel and now into ethos section and i don't think i want to take a villager shortcut this time around it is such high risk uh, but if we can pull it off, though, we do manage to gain a bunch of time. I think we're going to risk it, actually. Let's do it. I, I need to practice this little shortcut anyway. So the more time we do it, the more practice we get. And I'm just going to go into this nice and slow, see if we can get a nice, decent angle. Oh, that bounce has actually changed my mind. That was a very unfortunate bounce. So we shall go into this section of the track, which is very long and slow, but I feel like we wiggled our way through there. Now we need to make up some time in uh, the snowman array and in the minecart alley. And let's see what we can do. I want to go round the back of this, round the back of the snowman. There's a little spot here. And then we can weave through here and then come through here. We took our foot off the accelerator a little bit, but I don't think we lost as much time as if we would have hit one of the snowmen. So I think we might have yoinked back a couple of seconds. Now, can we get through the alleyway without being hit? And that was a perfected take through Minecart Alley. That has picked us up a ton of time. And we're into the last section of Ethos chicanes and this is the very difficult part i want to try and make up a little bit of time through this that we've lost throughout the course so far but i feel like this is going to be a strong lap maybe not a 436 but at least a sub 450 is where my head is at right now and uh, i'll be very happy with a sub 450 that is very very true and i hope any of the hermits that are watching right now are taking some notes on how to get themselves around this course because I make it look relatively easy, but trust me, I've been around this thing probably hundreds of times at this point. So I kind of know all the nooks and crannies off by heart, and we've definitely lost some time there, which is unfortunate. That was probably minus two seconds uh, there, but that is totally fine. We're going to get ourselves into this section. Can, can we take this bit? I've never been down this bit before. I don't know if this is going to cut a lot of time out of the, the time, but you know what? We can bounce off of here quite nicely. And that might have taken back the two seconds that we lost. And here we come to the finish line. Boom, baby. Another lap at BBR. BRR, rather. I keep calling it BBR. It's BRR. Brrr. Blue River Raceway has been completed. Wow. What, what an adrenaline rush it is going around this a beautiful, beautiful race course, guys. Fantastic. Okay, well, I'm looking forward to figuring out what the times are in editing. Uh, I don't know what they are now, but um, stick around over the next uh, minute or so, and I shall show the times on the screen, I suppose. Uh, I, don't, I feel like that wasn't sub 436, but that was a good lap nonetheless. And um, yes, I cannot wait to open Blue River Raceways for public consumption. It is going to be absolutely fantastic. Um, but yes, guys, for now, that's going to do it for today's episode. I want to desperately go and edit so that I can figure out my times, if I'm completely honest with you. And uh, yeah, I guess we'll talk about it in the next episode. But thank you so much for watching, everybody. And next time we come together, Pavilion will be done. Racecourse will be done. And we can start organizing the Hermit Grand Prix of 2023. It's going to be fantastical times. Thank you for watching, my friends. Ren Diggity Dauga signing out. And we will smell you all in the next episode.